Good morning, good morning. Church family, body of Christ, we are here in his presence. Can we just raise our hands and just welcome the King of Kings into this place? You know, he's here, but let's just honor him. Let's love on him this morning. Let us just thank him for the week he brought us through, whether it was bringing us through maybe a hard time or bringing us through a victorious time. Let us thank him nonetheless that God, you brought me through. Hallelujah, Jesus. And I am here in your presence, in your courts to give you the honor and the praise that is due to your name. Almighty God, I love you this morning. I praise you this morning. I worship your greatness this morning. I love you this morning, Jesus for all that you are. You are worthy of our praise and admiration this morning. He is a great God. Amen. Amen. Let us come into his courts with praise and thanksgiving this morning as we honor our risen Savior. Thank you, Facebook family, for joining us, worshiping with us. We know his presence is going to flood your place as you raise your hands and worship this awesome God we serve today. Let us worship him, church. God bless you this morning. Shines like the sun in all of its brilliance. The King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. And you would take my place. And you would bear my cross. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Glory to God. Lord, it's so wonderful. It's such a privilege to enter your presence this morning, to come before you, Lord, with songs of thanksgiving and praise, to enter your presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It never runs out on me. Your love 
love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love.
that's where my heart has peace with God and forgiveness where all the love I've ever found it comes like a flood it comes flowing down at the cross
hallelujah, and the power of that love. Hallelujah, Jesus. What a beautiful Savior we serve. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, we're going to honor our country in this presence and bless our nation under God today as we worship. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And on your way down, greet your neighbor, bless them, tell them how beautiful they are, how handsome they are, that you love them. <laughs> and if it's a new face, welcome out this morning. If you're visiting, you are our most honored guest, amen. And uh, we hope that you just get blessed this morning as we come into his presence and you walk away just refreshed and renewed and know that you have a friend here in this house, and there's many of them. <laughs> Amen? All right, sister. Hallelujah. Well, I'm going to start off with an announcement this morning. Reminder, this coming Wednesday night, November 24th, which is Thanksgiving Eve, there will be no in-person service in the sanctuary. However, service will be still, still held on Facebook Live at 7.30 p.m. So we hope that you will virtually join us. And we hope you and your family have an amazing and wonderful Thanksgiving. Can you believe it's already the week of Thanksgiving? <laughs> Woo! I smelled snow the other day. And then I like saw stuff floating in the air. Sharon was like, no. I saw stuff floating in the air and I realized it was just little pieces of broken up leaves and I was like no gotta hold out for my husband's <laughs> pastor says I'm ruining the service at the cross okay <laughs> it's great to be able to love each season God brings you to amen and Christmas Christmas yeah it's coming, but it's, uh, just amazing that it's already the week of Thanksgiving. And what a great week to come before him with that heart of Thanksgiving for all the blessings he's given us. Amen. I actually really love this time of year that we take that extra time. We should be thankful all the time, but being able to gather our families around and just take that moment to just really look and appreciate everything God has walked us through this year, both good and bad. Because sometimes that bad, you realize, you look at it and you say, God, I'm actually grateful you allowed me to go through that because my faith is now here or now I have this experience that I can share with someone else and help them walk through it and know they don't have to be alone. So there's so much to be thankful for. And um, I'm going to share from my heart. I'm thankful for you church this morning. Amen. I'm thankful for our pastor, and I'm thankful for each and every one of you. We just have a wonderful church family. Amen. We have some great answers to prayer to share this morning, and uh, just to give God some praise and some honor for his great, great goodness to us. A lady called for prayer for her foot, which she had badly sprained, and the doctor said it would take three to four weeks at least to heal. But after prayer and only a week and a half, it is completely fine. There's no more swelling or pain and she's able to walk and she is giving God the glory. Amen. We are too. Hallelujah. A man lost his wallet with important cards in it and a paycheck. After prayer, he was praising God because an honest Samaritan at his job returned it to him and he's giving thanks to God for watching over him and for perhaps speaking to the heart of that young man to go and say, this is what is yours. Amen. <laughs> We had been praying for a lady who was very ill in the hospital and was on a ventilator. After prayer, she's off the ventilator, breathing on her own, and she is going home and thanking you for standing in the gap. God gave her a miracle. Hallelujah. A lady was not able to make it to church because she was recovering from being sick. But Sunday morning, while watching our church service online, the presence of God filled her home. The next day, she was doing so much better. And she, this answer to prayer was bef right before the, the Wednesday service. She says, I'm looking forward to being in church on Wednesday. And I believe I actually saw her and just worshiping God and thanking him. So that, that online avenue that God has given to us and those of you who are sitting home maybe not feeling well today let that be a testimony just raise your hands God's with you he can be there to meet that need and get you well enough to get back in here and be together with us amen 
So we had been praying for a lady who was so very depressed, but after prayer, when her friend went to visit her, to her surprise, the lady was up and out of bed and dressed, and it was so good to see her about. God truly answered prayer, and they are so grateful. Amen? A man called in a good report that his investment increased 400%. He's so thankful for God blessing his finances, he had to call him in and give some glory. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Amen. In such an uncertain time for that 400% increase to come, you know God touched that for that brother. Amen? Amen. A couple prayed with a lady for healing and salvation, and when they heard back from her, she said that after they prayed together, she was healed from COVID, and she was com she, with prayer, she has been completely recovered. So she got her spiritual life healed along with her natural body. God did her a miracle. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. A young lady was in ICU because she was having multiple seizures. But just two days after she was called in for prayer, she's out of ICU, is up and eating. And the sister called and said, God is a miracle worker. Amen? Do you believe that? Hallelujah. A man called from a rehab center. He had met a few of our workers who talked and prayed with him. The phone worker asked if he had asked Jesus in his heart, and he said no. He was working towards it, and he needed peace. Well, she ministered to him on the phone and shared God's love and peace and the price he paid so that he would have that peace and assurance that one day he will make heaven our home. When she asked him if he wanted to ask Jesus in his heart, he said yes, and they prayed, and he accepted Jesus into his heart right over the phone. He was so thankful and felt God's wonderful peace come right to him. Praise be to God. Amen? Amen. So convalescent home ministry, your ministry came through, and then the front desk ministry followed up and brought forth that victory report and we are looking for great things to happen amen well a wonderful report from convalescent home ministry they share this has been such a wonderful month in the convalescent home ministry four people were wonderfully saved and so many others were encouraged and touched by god's unchanging hand they had a beautiful meeting at Fresh River, River Dementia. A couple of the residents are not able to talk, but they certainly understand the language of God's love. I love that. They had great big smiles and gave the workers the thumbs up sign. <laughs> One resident was sweetly saved. The worker asked if she wanted to ask Jesus into her heart, and she said yes. He explained to her how God is a spirit and he wants to live inside of us. As he prayed with her, she put her hand on her heart. The presence of God came down, her eyes welled with tears, and a beautiful smile came to her face. He asked her if she felt that, and she said, yes, God really touched her. Hallelujah, Jesus. What a beautiful picture they painted. You could just see that happening right there. And at touch points at Manchester, a lady came for the first time and brought her Bible. At the end of the meeting, the worker asked if anyone wanted to be saved. This lady said she was saved years ago, but got away from the Lord. He asked if she would like to renew her faith, and she said yes. They all prayed for her. She renewed her faith in Jesus, and she will be back to the next meeting and wants to attend the other meetings we have there too. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I feel like that's a mother's prayers being answered right there. Amen. They had a wonderful meeting at Grandview Rehab and Healthcare. There were two ladies in the room when the workers entered. They didn't seem too interested in the meeting at first, but ended up staying. Then a man came in, and he said he was looking for the meeting. <laughs> His hope was there. He's like, this is the place to be. <laughs> As the worker ministered, the younger lady was translating for the older lady, and the man was listening intently. After the meeting, the two ladies left slowly, as though they wanted to hear more and stay a little longer because of the peace that they felt. They turned and waved to the workers, especially the older lady. Then the wor workers talked with the man, asking him if he had ever asked Jesus into his heart. He said he thought he did. 
They just talked him through it. It was beautiful. His eyes were focused on what they were saying. He was soaking it in, friend to friend, Jesus to him. He seemed to glow in peace, and they left him with encouragement and the insurance, assurance of salvation. As the workers left, they spoke with a lady that had been sitting at the door. One of the workers gave her a track and told her that it was in Spanish. Her face changed as though they had given her a million dollars. They really reached these four souls and many more for Jesus. These meetings are perfect examples of what this ministry is all about, becoming that bridge, connecting people to Jesus, friend to friend, Jesus to their soul. Amen. Isn't that beautiful? Friend to friend and Jesus to their soul. That's a really cool way to talk about that. We can be that friend to friend, but Christ is within us, and we can bring Jesus to their soul. I love it. Amen. It's awesome. Well, we have a nice little report to share with you from Reverend Teachman. He's in Dominican Republic, and he shared that they had a meeting at a Haitian church. If you don't know, Haiti and Dominican Republic are right next to each other, so there's some Haitian uh, families and, and, and a community that has started of people who've moved from Haiti into Dominican, and their ministry is doing a great thing ministering to these people. He says, I noticed every single person, even the children, worshiped the Lord with all their hearts during the song service. One lady had trouble breathing and had heart pain. When she walked, she would be exhausted, and after prayer, we had her race another lady. They ran up the aisle from the altar to the back of the church twice, and she was fully healed. Her lungs were fine. Her heart pain was gone. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Another woman had pain in both of her shoulders. On one of her shoulders, the tissue was too thin around the bone. After prayer, all the pain was gone, and she could lift her arm up and swing them around quite easily. She had a big smile on her face as Jesus healed her. One young girl, about 10 years old, had been having a lot of problems with her eyes. She would have pain in her eyes, and her vision was very blurry. When she came into church, her blurry vision made it hard to enjoy the service. But Jesus healed her eyes, and she testified that she could see everything perfectly clear after prayer. Thank you for your prayers. God bless you from the Dominican Republic. Amen. God is moving and doing great things. Continue to keep them in your prayers for God to continue to lead them and, and bring forth victory in his name. Well, I have a nice Haiti Barrel Collection update. Thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone who has just been putting so much effort in. We have acquired a total of 3,606 items in our collection over the last three months, amen, of which, amen, includes a total of 776 bags of rice, beans, and canned meats, hallelujah, and a total of 533 jars of peanut butter. So there's still one more week ish, because Thanksgiving is in this, <laughs> one more week to add to those barrels, and especially the peanut butter. We know it's been hard. We've been having difficulty, but if you're out and about, and you see a good price, and you see some peanut butter that you can grab and want to bring it on in, um, we're going to be doing those the, the barrels will be here tonight as well as um, call us next week. Monday and Tuesday we're in the office. And then we have one final collection day next Monday night. Not this Monday night, not tomorrow night. The Monday night after Thanksgiving, we're doing a final collection of cans and bottles for the month of November and for any items that we've shared was a need for the Haiti barrels. So peanut butter is kind of on our wish list of hoping that we're going to see more peanut butter come in. So you've got more time to be a part of filling these barrels. And um, so we're excited. We're going to be packing the barrels on Giving Tuesday, which is the Tuesday after Thanksgiving, with our wonderful team of volunteers who've signed up to be with us on that day. And uh, also wanted to let you know we've already gotten a head start on the Giving Tuesday giving, so it didn't have to just be on Tuesday. We've already received $618 for our Giving Tuesday fundraising goal. Pretty awesome that before the day... So we want you to stay connected with WWLM's Facebook page on the Tuesday after Thanksgiving. We're going to be going live a couple of times throughout the day so those who couldn't be with us in person to put their hands to the work can peek in on the joy of the day and we can spread the word for friends and family to choose WWLM as their Giving Tuesday nonprofit 
um, organization to support on the global movement of Giving Tuesday. Amen. So we're going to be loading, packing the barrels for Haiti. We're going to be doing can and bottle redemption. We've got some Christmas preparation projects that we're doing. And so we're excited on that Tuesday to just put our hands together. So join us by peeking in and being a part, okay? And your prayers and your giving are just helping us to make that difference. And now we're going to jump into Thanksgiving. And I'm just going to tell you, this year to me was my favorite of our Thanksgiving outreaches that we have done for many years. And this year we had the opportunity for families to come to us. So I'm just going to read this and let the pictures kind of share with you. What a beautiful time we had sharing Thanksgiving blessings with families in our local community. It was wonderful to open our doors and welcome them in. Wrap our arms around them and even take time to pray with them. We shared of our church's love for them and let them know that the church's doors are open to them. And let me tell you, many of them shared, I would say 90% of them shared how they have been looking for a church and just didn't know where. They've been opening up with us on how they have been feeling this need in a greater way. And it was just, there's, there, we didn't take tons of pictures. We really try to respect that moment. But honestly, we've done outreach and it's been a blessing and we know families have been blessed. I am not taken away from what we have done through the years. But what I was telling Pastor was we opened that front door and Ben said it so, so beautifully. I think it was the second woman who had come in. She was cold just cold and just like coming in like I'm just coming to get my thing and like you know do my thing and I'm another number I just feel like our society has just made everybody a number and within like we had prayed we bound in prayer before we opened that door and we we asked God to take from what was at the altar on Sunday because the power of God was just so prevalent in our church and what he's trying to do in this hour and that good Samaritan feeling and that spirit of us as a body united to say, we've got to come together. We've got to put these, these schisms and differences aside and come together with a vision to say, God, let us cry out for those who need you. Let us get back into that focus of this is our purpose. And so that was what our prayer was before we opened those doors and said, God, let our purpose shine through. And I'm telling you, each life who came in, it was, it was like that hesitation. I don't know where I'm going. But because we were who God made us to be, and we had that presence that came from this altar, we just saw it melt away. That one lady specifically, we almost couldn't get her out. We were not trying to push her out. But she just kept lingering and like began to, it was, and then her daughter was doing the same thing. Her daughter was clinging to mom, hiding, not looking at us, wouldn't, we we're trying, you know, our best to be like at her level letting her know this is a safe place we love you too we love your outfit like doing all of that trying to by the end she was literally running in circles around her mom and her mom's like yep she's starting to feel comfortable like her her shyness and the 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 I don't know who you are but that spirit and that presence of life and hope and true love and true concern for their need not just here 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 we connected it was we were able to lock eyes it it was almost like they didn't know what to do with the fact that we wanted to see their eyes and um i don't know if i did a good enough job angelina crystal and ben uh, brother john and sister thai you were with us of just life by life and so we kind of scoured the church today looking because we gave them information on this church when it's here i believe some are watching today they said they'd be tuning in so will you pray with us that they will continue to like remember that feeling and um just know that this there's a home here for them and um so we're just really blessed and excited and that carries me into the next part because I'm really excited that when working with our local partnership for sponsoring these families, it worked out that we're going to actually be able to sponsor these same 40 families for Christmas. And isn't that awesome? So that we can continue that relationship, like friend to friend, soul to Jesus. Like this just beautiful, like God just knew that, that they needed to know at this time that there is a body here who's, who cares about you and can be that extended family. And so we're so excited to know that we're going to be able to continue that friendship. And uh, as of right now for the Christmas in Connecticut, we announced it last month, we started the collection. We have already raised 1880 
$38.50 towards our $2,500 goal. So we are more than halfway there. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being a part. And those who haven't yet been a part, there's, there's more that you can do. We have time. Um, we have another month. Christmas is not too far away, but we're, you know, coming now that we, we're, we're looking to start making those investments and you can be a part of it. And so for Christmas on the fields, the total needed was $2,600 and we have raised $631.50 so far, leaving a balance of $1,968.50. And as a reminder for you, those Christmas blessings are going to field workers and their churches so that they can have a time of celebrating Christ's birth. Amen. It's just, it's great. And we, we strive to sponsor them all year long in the many different endeavors God has called them to do. But isn't friend to friend, you know, just a beautiful thing to do and just do that extra at Christmas time to just share that love and that heart. And so you can be a part of that as well. And for the Blocks School Christmas in Zambia, the total we needed to raise, so for those of you who may not have been with us a month ago, we chose a need that they really have at the school, and it's for the children's uniforms for this coming school year and their need for shoes. So I expressed to you how we did the shoe that grows back in 2018, I believe it was. And... Um, they, they were wonderful, but there was this one little glitch in the design of the toe, and it would flap open, and the kids were having a hard time pressing it down. So I forgot to bring these last time, so I'm going to show you. They have a new design with this awesome, I'm telling you, I can't get this buckle out. If, like, I have to like, take a long time to get this buckle out. Can the camera zoom in on me? And so the shoe that grows, to remind you from before, this back part, expands so that the farther your shoe your foot grows in the behind you can either shrink this up a little bit to go a little tighter or loosen it up to give you more room and then the side parts here also do the same thing for the width of your foot so if you've got growth that's happening in that way you can expand it with those and these these velcros are very strong Ugh. and then this here expands the toe and it's they did such a better job because I called them. I was like, what's, the, what's been the um, response to this new clip in the toe? And they said, it's, we're just starting to get statistics in. But the girl said, I was just on a recent mission trip as a follow-up. And she said, these kids, these shoes are not flopping. They're not having any issues. And they're loving it. So this goes where there's one, two, three, four ways for them to shorten the toe. So that's why it's called the shoe that grows. It typically can last a child up to five shoe sizes for one pair of shoes. And it's this durable, durable rubber. They made it of an antimicrobial material, so it really limits the growth of bacteria, which is actually so important because these children have bare feet. They run around communities that they rip the bottoms of their feet up with stones, glass, uh, twigs, hard surfaces rip their feet up and that is really the one of the most common ways that disease is so rampant within their communities especially the more slum communities um, because their waste is just mixed in with the roadside trash with the place that the kids play so there's such an importance for them to have something safe to wrap around their feet they're waterproof so they can walk through a puddle wash them it's it's just amazing. So we were so happy that they came up with a resolution for this toe problem and um, wanted to be able to invest in these for our students at the school. And what I'm excited about, too, is they increased, they, they went up one more size. Some of the kids at the school, their feet were too big for the largest size that they had. But now they made a bigger size called extra large. And look at this. This is a little baby one. <laughs> and some of our preschool kids, they're age three and four. And these little babies, they, they're, because they're not getting the nutrition the way that we're used to getting nutrition, they grow so much slower and they're so tiny. And so you would think that this looks like it's not for a school age kid. I am telling you, this will fit all of the three and four year olds plus probably some of the first graders. So we were so excited that they expanded so all of the students in the school should be able to get a new pair of the shoe that grows. So, yay men, amen, amen. 
So uh, Christmas, we would like to bless each student with two new uniforms so they can switch those on and off. They take amazing care of their uniforms and a pair of shoes. The uniforms is coming in at $20 per student. The shoes are also have increased this year with production and just the increase of life. They have gone from $15 up to $20. So Christmas for the school children in Zambia is $40 per child. And, you know, it's a little more than what we've asked for in the past. And... Um, but I just want for you to think about just maybe taking and like my kids don't know this yet. <laughs> I wanted to take like a little bit from what I was going to like maybe buy for stocking stuffers of my kids. They're not going to suffer and be able to sponsor some children to be able to have something that is going to keep their body from disease. They are going to take it as if it's a Christmas present. Sometimes our kids, girls, when they get to teenage years, love clothes. Boys are just like, yep, yeah, mm-hmm, next, mm-hmm, next. But these children, they, when they get their uniforms, they hug them. They kiss them. They run around and squeal with joy. It is a gift. And so we want for you to be inspired to say, look where maybe we can as a family go and put some aside and maybe sponsor a child this Christmas. We're blessed because in our feeding fund, we're going to still be able to allow the children to have a fun Christmas dinner and not include that in the funds we have to raise because you guys have done an amazing job putting money in that fund so we're going to bless them with a Christmas meal and they'll have a nice little party um, but just wanted to take a moment to share with you how important it is to them and uh, just think about how you and fa your family may be able to sacrifice a little here and there share it with your friends and family share it with your co-workers sometimes people are looking for a worthy worthwhile cause to be a part of and they just need to know they can trust it so if they believe in you and they find your character is trusted trustworthy, share it with them and let's come together and see what we can do to make this happen. And so we've raised um, $2,176 so far towards this need. So that balance is $4,223.85. And I know together we have always proven God great in his greatness. Amen. Together we have, we know how to come together and make it happen. And I know that you're going to do that through your prayers and through your giving. God bless you, my sister, for, for putting your heart um, where, where God's heart is, and we appreciate all that you do. And I'm going to share this little note from just in Christmas as a whole. So you, those who've given so far, thank you so much. And those who want to get in on the action, plenty of time to be a part. You can give through the offering and note it for Christmas on a Mission, or especially those who are viewing online, wwlm.org. Click on the Campaigns tab, and then you'll see Christmas on a Mission, and it will walk you through how you can be a part of sharing the joy of Jesus this Christmas. And um, this is a little note from last year from Christmas in Connecticut. And I just wanted to share, I don't think we shared this verbally last year, and I wanted you to share the impact of how important your heart and your sacrifice this Christmas is. She says, I am a parent of a student whose family you sponsored for Christmas. I'm reaching out to thank you so very much for the very generous gift cards gifted to us. You don't know how much this means to my family. This has lifted so many burdens and couldn't have come at a better time. God bless you all, and thank you so very much. And I just want you to know you are appreciated, you are loved, and God, he sees you in your sacrifice. He sees you in your love. And I found this cute, this quote, and I want to share with you. It says, want to keep Christ in Christmas? Feed the hungry, clothe the naked, forgive the guilty, welcome the unwanted, care for the ill, love your enemies, and do unto others as you would have done unto you. And another person right after says, if you want to experience the true meaning of Christmas, give something to someone who can give nothing in return. Are you okay with me sharing a fun one? The reality of loving God is loving him like he's a superhero who actually saved you from stuff rather than a Santa Claus who merely gave you some stuff. Amen?
So we have the privilege and the honor and the blessing to share the Christ, the reason for the season. He is our hope. He is our joy. He is our peace. And, you know, the song that was shared last week during our prayer time has been rolling over and over in my head. I speak Jesus in this As you give and you share of your heart, speak Jesus into your gift because Jesus can be felt as we extend his hand during this season and showing the truth and the reason for the birth of Christ. The reason for the birth of Christ is so that you and I could have life and life more abundantly. What is that life more abundantly? That life more abundantly is peace. It is joy. It is hope. It is knowing that we can have eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. He is the reason for the season. And that gift, that is the example that we use at Christmas time, was the gift that he walked on that road, on that pathway to Calvary, to give his all for us so that we may be able to experience the greatest gift of eternal life. And you today are able to share that love and that purpose. And please rest assured, the ministries we are partnering with, they're not just taking this as a Christmas a celebration with tinsels and bows, but they're taking the time to open up their churches and to share and proclaim the message of the gospel of Christ. And as we do what God has given us to do in this community, we are taking the opportunity to do the same. So the Christ of Christmas is the Christ of every day, and we know that he is going to bless you for your sacrifice, bless you for your love. Because isn't that who he is to us? And so we just thank you so very, very much for pouring your love at this altar as we seek to continue to be a friend to a friend and a Jesus to the soul, to bring Jesus to the soul. He's a good, good father this morning. I am so beyond excited to get to be the person today. You know, I just have something to say before I say this, you know. I've been disappointed because there's been division in this ministry for far too long. I don't, the Lord just pressed upon my heart. I can't even do pastor. She's so good at like making you believe like I'm totally faking. So there's been a division in this ministry far too long. So New Life Choir, get on up on this stage and let us worship in unity this morning. Hallelujah.
sataya ora hasha tarabasataya atarabasi arabasataya ora hasha tarabasataya shall be impossible to him that believes. Hallelujah. God of us, Satire. <laughs> Hallelujah. I feel faith in this place. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus, Jesus, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Can we just give him a minute? <laughs> hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, hallelujah, Lord. God, hallelujah, Jesus, thank you, Lord, for this morning. Thank you for your presence and the faith that I feel in this house, God. I know of a surety what you spoke to me, God. This is where we're going to end our service in just a few minutes. But we're going to take a little journey first, God. God, I ask you to direct my words. Help me to... Bring what you gave me, God. Hallelujah. And then I'm hoping that every single hand in this place, God, not just a few, but every single person from the front to the back will lift their voice up in faith and make their petition known unto you. A miracle is going to happen in this place. Harabasataya. Harabasataya. Hallelujah, Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Give you the glory. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise the Lord. I'm going to preach to you a few minutes. I went back and forth over there. I feel God's faith, and the Lord just keeps impressing on me that I need to take you down this journey he took me down. And I'm not going to drop this down, but I am going to challenge you a little bit. And then I'm bringing you right back here. When you come back, music ministry, if you wouldn't mind, we're going to kind of pick this up right where we left off. But I really feel to talk to you a few minutes this morning. The Lord has given me a little bit of a different message. I, uh, <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus. We love you so much. We're grateful. Being religious or being a Christian is very hard. I came to this realization this week as I was putting this message together. We know about the big sins we need to avoid. No killing, no stealing, no lying. We're not allowed to cheat on our spouse. No promiscuity or sexual deviancy. There's no drinking, no smoking, no drugs. Not only that, but if I'm going to be a Christian, then I need to pray. I need to read my Bible. I have to attend church. I have to control my tongue. I can't swear or, or be nasty to people or say horrible things. I have to give my money through tithes and offerings. And even that list doesn't touch things like, like avoiding things that could lead you to sin. Things like dressing immodestly or going out to bars and clubs or watching appropriate, inappropriate movies video games, or spending time with people who are actively engaging in sin and illegal activities. And that doesn't even touch the local church restrictions of things like if you're going to be in ministries wearing ties and being a representative of the church 
giving an appearance. I, as I thought about all this list of things, I was like, Lord, this seems really restrictive. This seems very, very difficult. All these lists of things, and the Bible is full of commandments all the way through. So this morning, I would like to preach to you this message, the easy way out. <laughs> Hallelujah. How could it be easy to follow Jesus with all these restrictions? Now this morning, perhaps you think the easy way out is I'm going to tell you that if you love Jesus, nothing else matters. You can lie, cheat, live any way you want, free of any consequences. Or maybe you think I'm going to highlight the big things you have to avoid. Like tell you, you know, don't, don't, don't do all the, don't kill anybody, but all the small sins you don't have to worry about. If you think that, you probably don't know me very well. That's not my nature. You also may struggle a little bit because that's not what I'm going to talk about today. I did a simple concordance search. I just looked for the words keep and commandments in the same scripture. There were 69 instances where both of those words are found together. And if I replaced words, the word keep with words like obey or follow or walk in my laws, if I replaced commandments with things like statutes and his word and his law, there would be hundreds, even thousands of times where we are instructed to follow the commandments and the laws written in the Bible. Maybe you could push back and say, but Brother Ben, those are the Old Testament law. Jesus eliminated it and we no, it no longer has any value. So let's take a minute. Let's look at the Gospel of John in the New Testament and see what Jesus himself thought about the importance of keeping the commandments of God. I'm going to read John 14, 15 to 24. I'm going to move a little quicker than I had originally planned this morning. I want to get back into our, where God's bringing us. But I, I, I need to talk about this. God put this in my heart, specifically with where God's been talking to our church. Because I believe sometimes we approach God like it's a hardship. And I want to change our way of thinking this morning. John 14, 15 through 24. Jesus is speaking here. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. That's pretty straightforward. Maybe it's out of context. Let's keep reading. <laughs> and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot know, cannot receive, excuse me, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Jesus is given on a promise. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. In yet a little while, and the world sees me no more, but you have seen me. Because I live, you shall also live. And at that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. He that hath Oh, excuse me. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. And I will love him and will manifest myself unto him. I could give you many more scriptures. I will only give you one more at this time. I'd give you a, I had a few more, but I want to move. In 1 John 5, verse 3, it says, for this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. <laughs> By Jesus' own mouth, and through the scriptures in both the Old and the New Testament, we clearly see how important it is to keep God's commandments in our life. And herein lies the paradox. A paradox, I actually looked this up, is a seemingly absurd or self-contradictory statement. <laughs> Jesus stood up one day and he said these words. 
Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The easy way out, the yoke of Jesus, this paradox tells us it's a contradictory statement. Much like the statement that you need to keep all his commandments, and yet it's easy to walk with him. But this paradox says this, this self-contradictory statement, when investigated or explained clearly, may prove to be well-founded or true. Hallelujah. Let's go to Luke chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. This is going to be my main text this morning. I want to talk to you about a man named Zacchaeus and how an ordinary day completely changed his life in an instant. Jesus entered into, oh, excuse me, and Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus. He was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. A publican was a tax collector. They worked for Rome. That was their job. So the Israelites didn't like him so much. This guy was the chief over all of the publicans, all the tax collectors. And we're going to get on a little more into his life, but he wasn't even an honest or good tax collector. He was cheating the people on top of it. Let's keep going. <laughs> and he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and he could not see him for the press because he was little in stature. So Zacchaeus ran in front of them and climbed up into a sycamore tree so that he could see Jesus. For he was about to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. Hallelujah. And when the people saw it, they began to murmur. Remember I told you they, these publicans weren't very popular with the Israelites? They didn't like them that much. They began to murmur, begin to complain. I just lost my place. That he was gone to be the guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore unto him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation. Come to this house. For as much as he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Zacchaeus interests me. He was a Jewish man, and he knew the law. He knew what was right, and he knew what was wrong. He knew what he was doing was wrong long before Jesus ever showed up. But for Zacchaeus, it was simply a matter of values. He valued money and the things that money could buy more than he valued following after the law. <laughs> but one day, he allows Jesus to come into his house. One day, he spends time at the foot of the Lord, at the feet of the Lord Jesus. In, in one instance, in one contact with Jesus Christ, his entire value system changes. <laughs> Hallelujah. He realized he'd spent his entire life trying to gain money 
when there was something else that was much more valuable. He began his search not really knowing what he was looking for. He'd heard of Jesus. He was curious about it. He wanted to see when he passed by. But I've come to tell you that if you seek, you shall find. If you seek, you shall find. And as he sought out Jesus, he found more than he could have ever dreamed of. <laughs> Hallelujah. When you seek him, you're going to find more than what you were looking for. And what Zacchaeus found was literally life-changing from the inside out. Hallelujah. He was a liar. He was cheating people. He was stealing from them. And he was hoarding all his wealth. But now he's sitting in the presence of Jesus Christ. And he makes things right. Jesus didn't go through the law. He already knew it. Just being in the presence of Jesus made him start to reconsider what was important in his life. Hallelujah. I believe that Zacchaeus was never satisfied with the money that he had taken. I believe it was never enough. I believe that he knew there was something more. And I believe that because this man with all kinds of money and all kinds of power and all kinds of influences snuck out and climbed up in a tree just to see Jesus. Something in his soul told him there was something different about the man that was passing his way. <laughs> Hallelujah. And when Jesus called him, when Jesus entered into his presence, the Bible says he received him joyfully. You would think that if I told you today, you have to take half of your wealth and give it all away. And everything you've done from the day you were born to today, you got to go make right. That sounds like a hard thing, doesn't it? <laughs> Yet Zacchaeus receives him joyfully and of his own volition rises up and says, I'm going to do the right thing. Hallelujah. <laughs> when we come to Jesus, he gives us peace. When we come to Jesus, he gives us true joy. When we come to Jesus, we find rest for our soul. His yoke is easy. His burden is light. Hallelujah. I think we look at the statement improperly of if you love me, you will keep my commandments. I think when we read scriptures about obeying God's law, our desire to serve God and be close to him causes us to put a pressure on ourselves. And we believe that if I can manage to follow all the rules, I will prove my love to Jesus. There is a bit of truth to this. There, a tree will bear fruit. So if you are serving God and living right, your life will bear witness of that. But I believe there's something more here we should look at. I think we need to reverse the statement a little bit. If I love Jesus, his love enables me to keep his commandments. <laughs> his commandments are not grievous. <laughs> Hallelujah. Zacchaeus didn't struggle that day to part with his ill-gotten money. It was just a natural reaction to being saved. I don't struggle every day with the list that I gave you at the start of this message. Here, I want to break down some of the things that I shared with you. Thou shalt not kill. I don't want to kill anybody. Now, do I get frustrated? <laughs> I find that the closer I get to Jesus, though, the more I want to see everyone saved. The more I see people like he sees people. And when they anger me, I'm able to say there must be something in their life that's lacking. Oh, thou shalt not steal. God has supplied all my needs. <laughs> I'm grateful with what he's given to me. 
Why would I want to take anything from somebody else? Matter of fact, that takes care of the 10th commandment at the same time, right? Thou shalt not covet. I'm satisfied with Jesus. He's Jehovah Jireh. Everything I need, he always supplies. Hallelujah. Sometimes it doesn't look like... It, um, hallelujah. He's Jehovah Jireh. Oh, but I can't lie. Well, even consider these, these types of things. How would society function if we went around killing, stealing, and lying anytime we wanted? Honesty and kindness to each other makes society run smoother. And isn't our lives better when we love each other and treat each other with kindness and respect? Oh, but I can't drink or use drugs. I can't smoke. Why would I want to be addicted or under the influence of substances that damage my body long term, cause me to make bad decisions in the short term, and leave me sick and longing for more in the morning? I did a quick Google search and it was estimated that the amount of money spent on drug abuse alone in the U.S. is over $740 billion a year. I see people all the time who are trying to get free of those things that they picked up when they were young men and young women. Why do I want to be bound? Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, but I've got to go to church. I've got to read my Bible. I've got to pray. You know what? I don't have a problem going on vacation with my family because I love them and I love spending time with them. And when you fall in love with Jesus, you won't have time spending with him either. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not hard to t spend time with my wife and it's not hard to spend time and find time for Jesus. Oh, but I've got to control my tongue. Why would I want to say things that would hurt other people? Jesus died for those people that I'm saying bad things to. And not only did he die, but he anointed me and called me to be an ambassador. He trusted me with the ministry of reconciliation. He trusted me to be the one that would be his representative that would show them the love of Jesus. Why would I want to open my mouth and speak things that would hurt them? <laughs> I'm talking about his yoke is easy. I could do this all day. I actually had more, but we'll keep moving. I could go through the laws, even the Old Testament laws that were given to Israel that through the New Testament we found are no longer applicable. Things like eating meat and eating blood and staying out of the camp when you got sick. If you look at them, almost all of those Old Testament laws were simply health and sanitary things that kept the children of Israel thousands of years ahead of the rest of the developed world to keep them safe and healthy. <laughs> they didn't know about disease. They didn't know about bacteria, but when they got sick, they knew they had to leave the camp for seven days. Why? So nobody else would get affected. I used to look at the fruit of the Spirit. Ephesians says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. I used to look at these things and figure they were part of my character. There were pieces of it. And that it was up to me to strive in my life to develop these fruits so that I could become more like Jesus. But in thinking about it a little more, I realized there's a reason he called it the fruit of the Spirit. <laughs> if I'm full of the Spirit, the fruit is going to be inside of me already. If I'm full of the Spirit, everywhere the Spirit is, the fruit is. <laughs> Now there's some work I need to do. There's some changes I need to be willing to make to grow my character. But when I'm full of the Spirit, He helps me to have this Spirit inside of me. Remember He said, I and the Father are one. And just like I'm in you, you're in me, we can be like Jesus. Now I am not perfect. I didn't come to tell you that and... Uh, literally Lauren's sitting down there laughing at me. 
when she heard me say that. She thought that was that funny. That tells you how well she knows me. <laughs> Those of you who know me know I'm not perfect. The Bible tells us that nobody except for Christ himself is perfect. But Jesus didn't demand perfection. He didn't call up to Zacchaeus in the tree. And he says, fix everything in your life and I will then come back to see you. No. <laughs> he looked up into the tree and said, Zacchaeus, will you welcome me into your house? And when he came into the house, Zacchaeus' life completely changed. <laughs> Religion is hard. Following all the rules is hard. If you're sitting on the fence, it's hard to serve God. <laughs> it's hard to serve God when your heart's not in it. It's hard to serve God when you've got things going on in your life that are contrary to God. But if you would allow him to come into your house, if you would allow his spirit to fill you up from the inside, his commandments are not grievous. Out of a satire. Hallelujah. He calls to you today. Come unto me. I still remember when I came to him. When I answered his call for the first time. I remember the first time I realized that he loved me. It was the first of many times that I realized just how much he loved me. The more I walk with him the more I want to be like him. The closer I get to him, the more I realize just how much he loves me. David said he knew me when I was in my mother's womb. Right. Hallelujah. Jeremiah tells us that God has a plan for us. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's a plan full of good things with a specific God-centered destination. David again tells me that if I could number God's thoughts towards me, they would be more than the grains of sand. God is thinking of me every moment of every day. And the songwriter said, even when I don't see him, he's working. Hallelujah. The greatest part about this realization to me is that he's still working in my life. He's still working on my character. He's developing my ministry. He's doing something beautiful with my life. And it's all according to his plan. I don't struggle every day to fulfill every word of this Bible. I couldn't even quote every word of this Bible, all the laws that are inquired in there. Instead, I chose the easy way out. I'm trusting him to lead and guide me. And I'm doing my best to obey and follow when he leads. When he, the spirit of truth, shall come. Hallelujah. He will guide you into all truth. And here's the crazy part. The closer I get to him, the easier it is to keep his commandments. And just like Zacchaeus, it's not a hard struggle. It's just happening naturally. His fruit is simply developing in my life. And I find I'm not the same man that I used to be. <laughs> I think there's two ways that God speaks to us. The first is through the word of God, through prayer, through that voice that we hear, a check, right? When we go to do something, kind of know that's not right. The second thing is that God will direct us through the local church, through the leadership in that place. I believe that the two will nearly always agree. And the only reason I say that is I find sometimes one takes, up to catch, takes time to catch up with the other. Uh, there's been times that God spoke to me things, and I've not seen it appear on the, the other side where people notice it for a little bit of time. And then there's been times leadership has talked to me about things, and I didn't see it at all. But sure enough, in time, God began to speak to me and show me that. The two always will agree. I find that God is drawing me and calling me in a way that I haven't felt since I chose to get baptized. 
I feel an urgency not just for my life, but for this house of God. I feel like everything we've gone through over the last period of time has, has caused us to come to a place of decision. Caused us to come to a place where we need to make a determination that we will run after God like never before. The darker it gets around us, the more I find it necessary to stay closer to God. One of the things that has really resonated with me, and when my pastor said it two weeks ago, it like shook me to the core, was that there is a need for us to fast and pray. Now, I know what the word fasting does to everybody. <laughs> Y'all got tense on me. I know there's half of you sitting out there, but I take medicine. But I get headaches. But I got this job. But I, but, but, okay. Stay with me for a second. Fasting is not really about food. And if you survive me saying that it's hard to be a Christian, you can survive that statement. <laughs> I shouldn't say this, but I run these ideas by my wife sometimes, and I rate them by her reaction. <laughs> and when I told her that I was going to preach that it's hard to be a Christian, she's like, you're not going to say that, are you? <laughs> I'd rate it somewhere around an eight on the things that I've said to her that have been like, oh, boy. <laughs> I didn't give her any context, to be fair. I'd like to do that to her, to mess with her. <laughs> I'd sort of like to mess with you. That's my thing. <laughs> I'm not perfect. <laughs> if you couldn't hear, Pastor said, that's why Lauren was laughing at you. <clears throat> hear me out. Fasting is not really about food. I think God would rather have you eat a burger and spend an extra hour in prayer then starve all day and not make any time for him. <laughs> I don't think that that's what God is necessarily calling you to. Now, if you're able to abstain from food, the natural cutting off of food from your natural body has some physical reactions that makes you weaker and tireder. It makes it a whole lot easier to put down this flesh and draw close to God. I, I'm, not, I'm not preaching some new doctrine that you can't fast. I believe there's a value to that in a time and a place. But that's not the feeling that I've been getting recently. And I, I have taken a couple days and pushed the plate away. But I feel like God is calling us to a different type of fast. Is that okay if I talk about this? I, fasting is not simply the elimination of food from your body, but it's a symbol of a sacrifice that you make to God where you trade something you enjoy and your natural body needs in an effort to draw closer to God. I believe that throughout this auditorium, God has been speaking to some of you to fast different things. I believe some of you are called to cut off some of your social media. I believe some of you are called to replace some of your time with television for prayer in the Bible. As God's been speaking to me over the last month in Pastor's message, I was reminded, I, I shared it with the men, of Brother Ben Westry when he was a young man. And God spoke to his life and told him to set aside a time every single day. I didn't know about it. He didn't like share it with all of us until one day we were at an event together and Ben left so that at 10 p.m. he wouldn't miss his appointment with God. Are, are you that dedicated? Will you make an appointment with God and say, I will not let anything interfere with this time because I'm going to meet you, God? Hallelujah. Hmm. God wants to fellowship with you. God longs to do miraculous things through our lives. You know, the disciples were given power and authority. They went around healing people. They went around ministering. But one day, there was a man who came who had a son that kept throwing himself into the fire. That son would throw himself in the fire to burn himself. And the disciples couldn't heal him no matter what they did. 
Jesus comes and set this man free. And the disciples came and said, why couldn't we help this man? He had already given them authority. They had already healed people and helped people. Why was it different this time? Jesus answered them and said, because they needed to start to fast and pray to increase their faith. It's time we stop accepting things that are not of God in our lives. It's time we stop accepting things in our bodies that don't belong. It's time we stop accepting that people that we love and care about are lost or confused and we just say there's nothing I can do but hope. There's nothing I can do but wait. My friend, the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous person availeth much. It's time that we take us, push things aside. It's time that we open our mouths in this secret place with God and begin to prophesy. <laughs> Build up our most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost and we take this word of God and say, you shall not come nigh my dwelling. Harabasataya. <laughs> Prophesy to the dry bones. Hear ye the word of the Lord. And no matter the distance, no matter the situation, the Holy Ghost is going to empower your words and they will not return void. The prophet Samuel had said not one word that he spoke fell to the ground. There is a spiritual battle taking place right now in this world right here in Manchester. And we have the power to shift things according to God's will. Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will not accept that some people are too far gone. I will not accept that it's too late. Upon this rock I build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against their life. I will not accept that there's some people that will just stay on the fence and they'll never fully commit to God. Today I'm offering you an easy way. His yoke is easy. If you're struggling to serve God, if it feels like the yoke is chafing your neck, neck, excuse me, it's because you're walking the wrong way. When they train oxen, at the beginning, they pull if they're on a team. And when they first come together, a lot of times there's chafing because they go their own way. So that if they're able to, they'll always put an old seasoned ox with a young ox. That young ox chafes a little bit at the beginning. But pretty soon he finds it's easier to walk along with the master. <laughs> when they walk with the master, there is no chafing. You've been believing a lie. The modern church world has told us that it's too hard to do it, so we'll just lower the standard. No, my friend, hallelujah, his blood is still the same as the day he shed it on Calvary and rose up from the dead and nailed my sins to the cross. He made my sins, and he hung my sins up to an open shame, not the other way around. He's able. He's able. That weakness in your life, he's able. That iniquity you can't seem to... He's able. If you would just allow the Spirit to come in, you won't miss it. And Zacchaeus is my example. So, musicians, please, ushers. I hope I got everything out. I skipped through. Hallelujah. A miracle can happen in this place. Last Sunday was not a one-time thing. It's something that's been building in this house of God for months now. It's been building all the way back to Brother Dean in June when he talked about entering into that secret place. It's been building. God is calling. God is calling us to more power. I don't know what we face tomorrow, but I do know who holds my hand. And I want to be right there in the center of his hand. I don't want to be out on the fringes hoping to hang on. I don't want to be trying to play one way when I walk into church and live a completely other way outside of church. 
Oh, that's when it begins to chafe. That's when it becomes religion. But his yoke is easy. I wonder if there's anyone in this place who wants a greater walk with Jesus. Maybe you've never accepted him. Maybe you've gotten away from him. If you're here in this place, would you lift your hand? Hallelujah. I see your hand, sister. Is there anyone else who say, Lord, I want more of you? I see your hand, brother. God is going to move in this house today. You are about to climb out of a sycamore tree and meet the Savior. <laughs> he knows your name even if I don't. I would like to invite you, if you'd like to, please come down. Pray with our ushers. They're going to encourage you, going to help you. Would we rise through this auditorium? Can we rise to our feet? Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I know there are people in this place. God has spoken to you that he's going to do something in your life. <laughs> and you're wondering when. <laughs> today I challenge you. Why not today? <laughs> Why not right now? I believe that God can heal. <laughs> right now. <laughs> I believe that God can save right now we might not get the news for a while because maybe they're in North Carolina or Florida or California or Timbuktu but soon we'll hear the word <laughs> we're going to gather around this altar we're going to begin to pray in the Holy Ghost and as the Holy Ghost, that spirit of truth, begins to speak in our lives, he's going to start to speak of things to come. <laughs> Open your mouth and start to prophesy. Call out, Lazarus, come forth. <laughs> Call out, hear ye the word of the Lord. Release your faith this morning.
Jesus this morning, don't we? We got time for Jesus. He's still moving. He's still doing miracles. Lives are receiving encouragement and salvation. He's moving. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord Jesus. some miracles today and some miracles have started to happen and this week we're going to walk in his miracles hallelujah Jesus I want to remind you to fall in love with him greater than you ever have before because like Ben said when we fall in love that service and that devotedness it just comes naturally it's there. If you're still praying at this altar, you keep on praying. Show your love one to another. We'll see you again tonight, gentlemen, over at the Olive Tree, ladies here in the sanctuary. God bless you. God bless you.